Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. So, not really sure how long it'll take us to get through this book. It's about 45 pages. I remember it really well, so yes, I could safely flip to the back and look and see that it's about 45 pages. Because, you know, I was just a little bit horse and unicorn crazy when I was younger. Forget a little bit, she says. Yeah, forget Babysitter's Club. I had Saddle Club books. Wow. It's the same thing, but with horses. And today, our book is Learning About Unicorns by Laura Alden, illustrated by Christina Stasiak. A nice cover to start with. Very fanciful. The unicorn is well illustrated. It's not like anatomically correct to be you know horse-shaped. It's got all the general shapes from it, but it's stylized in a very nice way. It's almost like translucent, kind of glowy. Apparently Lux has a lot to learn about unicorns. Hey, I guess that's what this book is for. Dedicated to Lorraine Mulligan Davis. Also, apparently this was originally published in 1955. Hmm. In this country? It doesn't say. Hmm. Just that that's the Library of Congress cataloging and publication data. Hmm. And this version is, was apparently printed in 1985. There is a rustling in the bushes, an outline in the trees. There's a flash in the dark. Something is there. Something strange. Something mysterious. Stop. Look. Maybe you won't see anything. But maybe if you wait... You will. You may glimpse the shape of a horse with a horn. It might be a unicorn. A unicorn who is watching you. Hmm. The designs and art is just so, um, it's hard to describe it like this. It's fanciful, but there's a particular art style I'm trying to come up with, and I just can't, like, it's almost abstract, but it's also got elements of realism to it. It's hard to explain. And then there's the kids on one side who are watching the unicorn and the unicorn watching them. And the side with the unicorn on it is actually the cover. Unicorns, though, are usually hard to see. They live around the edges of our minds. We see them out of the corners of our eyes. Yet when we turn to look, there is nothing there. Unicorns are magical and very, very quick. Those who know say unicorns are most often seen near water. Waterfalls are best. That's because a unicorn likes to drink with its head up, so it can watch for hunters. Someone killed the creature for its horn. The horn of a unicorn can heal any sickness. It can make any water pure, or so they say. But the best way to find a unicorn is to find one asleep. On matted ferns or on soft green moss, the unicorn sleeps and dreams. And if you sit by it quietly, you will dream too. You will dream dreams of long ago kingdoms and times now forgotten. You will dream of what was and of what might have been. Uh, it's kind of interesting how they use at the corner of our eyes thing. A lot of stories where creatures are ethereal, see them out of the corners of your eyes. Because we all know now how much our brains lie to us. Oh yeah. Basically, our brains go, I think this is what's going on based on previous experience. So we're being mobbed by a lion right now, I think. Yeah, we're being mobbed by a lion. Yeah, that, that's pain. That's definitely pain. Cut back to reality and you have a small kitten curled up in your lap who is flexing their claws. <laughs> or gnawing on your finger. But that's, that's a good one. That's, I like that. Also, black and white art this time mm -hmm. on both pages. That unicorn looks very... um. I would say happy, but it's that kind of, gotcha. <laughs> Unicorns have lived in many lands. They come in different shapes and sizes. Some are hunters. Some are fighters. All have a magical horn. But where did all these unicorns come from? Who saw the first unicorn? Who sees them still? Nice art. Reuse of art right here. Mm-hmm. Because that's the same unicorn from the other page. And then we have a winged unicorn in the MLP mythos called an alicorn. Ignoring that. <laughs> <laughs> the first unicorns. There are many legends of unicorns. 
from every time and place. A legend is made up of many stories. Part of a legend may be true. From the Middle East comes the legend of the first animal named. And then we have a little asterisk here. A legend, not the creation story of the Bible. Just in case that might be unclear in the next couple of paragraphs. Just in case. When the world was made, so were its creatures. There were many kinds of creatures, but only two of them had names, Adam and Eve. It was Adam's job to name the animals, so he called them together. A glint caught his eye. It was a horn, a single horn. You are unicorn, Adam cried. Unicorn became Adam and Eve's friend and guide. They rode on its back to get around, and just for fun. Unicorn loved Adam and Eve, and they were very happy in the garden where they lived. Then one sad day, Unicorn saw Adam and Eve driven from the garden. Flaming swords burned at the entrance. Unicorn cried out to its friends, but Adam and Eve could never return. Unicorn took one last look at the garden. Then it leaped through the fiery gate. Unicorn knew there was no way back, but out of love, it gave up the garden for its friend. I love the tone of voice you're using for this book. <laughs> also, I see some, like, script on the next page. Um, and going back to this current page, that's a lot of fire at the top there. And that unicorn looks very determined. Like, I will see my friends. Friendship is magic. In the Far East, people said the unicorn helped to make the world. Then they said it fled into the forest and was hardly ever seen. But one day a Chinese emperor saw one and he received the gift of the unicorn. Fu He sat beside the yellow river. The water moved slowly by and was gone. It was like life, thought Fu He. People move through life without leaving anything behind. Then across the river, Fu He saw a unicorn. It looked like a calf, but had the scales of a dragon. From its head grew a silver horn. The unicorn waded through the river. Whenever it stepped, the muddy water became clear, and the unicorn dropped a trail of emeralds behind him. The creature drew near. Fuhi saw its back was covered with magic signs and symbols. Fuhi stared at the lines and squiggles on the beast's back grabbed a stick and traced the symbols in the dirt. From these lines came the Chinese alphabet. After that, thoughts of people could live after them, for words could be written and remembered. And so can stories about unicorns. So by that story, their written language came from the back of a unicorn. Yes. Hmm. I wonder if that's true. I'm talking about if that story is actually from the East, or if it's just one they made up for this Look. Some people think unicorns only lived long ago. Unicorns are no more, they think. The last unicorn, says one poem, was the late passenger. Another asterisk. A fictional story, not the biblical account of Noah. Just in case that might be unclear in the next couple of paragraphs. Noah's son, Ham, looked around in a pout. The ark was a mess, and he had just cleaned it that morning. I'll be scrubbing the rest of my life, thought Ham. Then Ham had an idea. He would shut the ark door, just for the night. No more animals, no more scrubbing until morning. Slam! Ham pulled the door closed. Noah didn't know. He was counting noses and toes. But soon there came a knock on the ark door and the sound of crying. Who is knocking? Noah called to Ham. What's going on? Open up, open up. Take all animals in. Even a duck won't live through this. Ham tried not to hear. It started to rain. The crying went on. Forever, say some. For Ham had locked out the unicorn. And Noah and Ham never saw one again. Never leave a unicorn out in the rain. I, I love how they keep using, like, the Bible, but this is not an actual Bible story, so we have to, like, you know, put a little asterisk and stuff. 
Well, you know, you do have that song by the Irish Rovers about the unicorn being left behind. Mm -hmm. Though, isn't it in that one they're arrogant and that's why they get left behind? Because there's a version where they get left behind because they're arrogant. I believe in that one the unicorns are out playing silly games, so they're late. Ah. So they're irresponsible. And another black and white picture. And the zebras stand out the most. Yes, impressive in a black and white drawing. Especially since there's bars, too. Everywhere a unicorn. The unicorn legends grew and grew, and they spread from east to west. During the Middle Ages, people in Europe enjoyed hearing stories about unicorns. So much so that they even made up new stories about the creatures. The unicorn became a symbol for new beginnings. It was a favorite of young girls. That was because people said unicorns laid their heads in the laps of true maidens. The unicorn was a symbol for many things during past centuries. For a while, it was even used as a symbol for Christ. Those were great days for unicorn stories. Maidens, as in girls who are virgins. Because apparently unicorns protect virgins and do other stuff to them or protect them from things that would do stuff to them. Depending on what mythos you read. That's a really nice picture, and it's kind of Dutch? A little bit, maybe. The um, girls that are dancing around the unicorn in the picture are slightly like... That outfits remind me of Dutch. Often, in the Middle Ages, a unicorn would show up with famous people. Some even say a unicorn changed history. As in the story of the unicorn and Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan was a fighter from Mongolia, and he was a winner, too. His empire stretched from Korea to Persia, but Khan wanted more. So in 1224, Khan's army marched toward India, and no one could stop him. No one dared. Khan climbed the mountains until he reached the last one. He was ready to conquer India. But no one was there to fight. No soldiers, at least. There was only a small green beast with a red and black horn. A unicorn, thought Khan. What could this mean? The unicorn spoke four languages, but it did not say much. Instead, the small green animal knelt three times at Khan's feet. A feeling crept over Khan. He only had that feeling when his father was around. Then Genghis Khan was afraid for his father had died years before. Khan did not move. Khan's army grew restless. For the first time in his life, Genghis Khan feared. At last, Khan called to his men. Turn back, he said. My father has warned me not to go on. Khan looked at his small friend. The unicorn lifted its head and was gone. So how did he know that it spoke multiple language when it didn't really seem to speak to him, and it just knelt? Well, they say it did not say much, so it could have said one word in each of the four languages. Hmm. Also, a green unicorn. Interesting. I've never heard of a green unicorn before. Like I said, Lux has a lot to learn about unicorns, and also about the way this book is organized. So it was that Genghis Khan marched back down the mountain, and India was saved. A little unicorn goes a long way. Apparently a rendering of Genghis Khan's back and a green unicorn. Interesting. I believe the correct term is a Kirin. K-I-R-I-N. Hmm. Kind of like dragons. They've been everywhere, man. Mm-hmm. The most famous unicorn story of all was told 500 years ago. It was told in seven pictures called tapestries. The tapestries were made thread by thread, by weavers in Brussels. They told of the hunt of the unicorn. The nobles met at dawn in their tunics and tights. They planned to hunt the unicorn. Others came to protest their plans. Do not hunt the unicorn, they begged the Lord. But the Lord only laughed and called for his dogs. Ho, he waved. Ha! They were off with their horns and their hounds. The woods were damp. The hounds sniffed the ground. Then, there it was. Dogs barked and danced. 
the air filled with spice. Unicorn scent. The unicorn stood by a stream. Its hooves were silver, its eyes a bright blue. Its pearly horn was well ridged and well worn. Animals stood beside it. It knelt at the stream. Then, slowly, it dipped in the tip of its horn. The stream gurgled and was clean. But when the other animals jumped in to bathe and to drink, the unicorn ran. Hmm. That's a very nice illustration. It's like, the style is still there, but it's also different in the way the mane's drawn on the unicorn and the way the horn is rendered. Yes, the mane is very curly and fluffy. And the horn has more swirls to it. It's much more heavily spiraled. You can see the two dogs mentioned in the story. The hunters ran after the unicorn. The unicorn ran through the woods by the stream. The hunters far outnumbered the creature. When it again leaped into the stream, they surrounded it. A spear pierced the unicorn's side. Escape! Sad and wounded, the unicorn ran to find a place to rest. Then, near the castle, it saw three women sitting. Now, unicorns like young women. Young women seem gentle and kind, and they do not usually hunt unicorns. The unicorn liked one woman best, but she was crying. The unicorn laid its head in her lap to comfort her, and then the dogs were upon it. The hunters were, too. The woman tricked the unicorn. Tricked and trapped, the unicorn was killed. The young woman vanished. The town got ready to celebrate. But there is one more tapestry. And in it, the unicorn, though chained, lives again, just like magic. You can see the seven unicorn tapestries at the Cloisters, a part of the Metropolis Museum of Art in New York City. Though considering how museums change their displays, who knows where they are now? You can even do a Google search on that. In the following story from Italy, the unicorn brings sadness to the wood nymph. Once a man saw a wood nymph on his way home from hunting. The nymph was dressed in the color of mist. A bow and arrows hung from her waist. The man fell in love with her that minute, but when the nymph saw the man, she ran into the woods. The man chased her. Now nymphs know their woods, so the man did not catch her. Still, he did not give up, but lived in the woods to be near her. And he carved a reed flute and played it each night. Nymphs loved music. That much he knew. At last the nymph came. She danced for the man. And each night after that, she danced and he played. But the nymph would not go back with the man to his land. Then one night, the nymph did not come. The man waited and played and finally slept. He dreamed that a figure came and stood over him. The figure spoke in a terrible voice. It is forbidden, it said. A mortal shall not love a wood nymph. The man awoke. He felt himself change. His neck grew longer. His arms became legs. And then a horn pushed out from his forehead. The man jumped and ran. No, galloped about. The nymph, he must find her. Would she love him still? He found her at last, but she turned and took aim. My love, he cried, but his voice was strange, and she did not know him. The arrow pierced his heart, tears mixed with his blood, and the nymph wept, too, for her lost love. Okay, interesting. This is probably the oddest picture in the entire book. Because we have a unicorn body with a man's head, and he's looking at the horn, kind of shocked. Yeah. Interesting. Also black and white, in case I didn't mention it. You did not. But most stories about the unicorn tell of its powers. In Russia, this story is told of the magical horn. It was a long, hot summer in the Crimea, hotter than usual. Water was scarce. In one village, people had only enough water to drink. There was no washing allowed, so dust and dirt covered the town. Then typhoid struck. 
At first, sick people thought they were just thirsty and dirty. Then one woman saw rosy spots on her husband's chest. Another saw them on her daughter. The women burned fires around their houses. They hung herbs in the doorways. The spots spread through the town. Then someone thought of a unicorn's horn. The horn could heal anyone. Some scoffed, but some did not. They planned how to catch a unicorn. To do so, they needed a young woman with no husband or children, but there was not such a woman in their town. Then I'll catch a unicorn, said a woman named Katya. But you have children, another said. Unicorns trust those who would help others, said Katya. I know I am not perfect. Still, I would like to try. So the women walked behind Katya in a line to the lake. They waited while Katya sat, her hands in her lap. At last, a unicorn came, late in the day. It drew near, then it stopped. With its eyes on Katya, the beast stepped back. Katya met its gaze. A minute went by, then the unicorn stepped gently forward. It laid its head right in Katya's lap. Hmm, and what is it with virginity and purity? Why are those two always connected in a lot of stories? Because men wanted to know that they weren't rearing another man's child. Hmm. Katya led the unicorn back into town. At each well, the creature dipped its horn. The water bubbled and became pure. Then Katya took the unicorn to each house. The creature held its horn over those who were ill. They felt better at once. At dawn, Katya led the healer back out of town. A crowd came along. One man whispered, What if the sickness comes back? Another man said, The magic is in the horn. We must have the horn. So the men killed the unicorn and kept its horn. Katya, in horror, moved far away. And when sickness came again to that town, no unicorn came. You don't get a second chance with the unicorn. And I think I see a story I vaguely remember on the next page. There are many iterations of that story, but the one we just finished was page 26, so I think we're at about the halfway point, point, which would be a good stopping point. So this has been Learning About Unicorns by Laura Alden, illustrated by Christina Stasiak, part one. Probably just two parts, but we'll see. Thanks for listening. You enjoyed this? There are a whole bunch of Ember's reading rooms. Uh, Lux told me we're somewhere in the 80s right now. So yeah, and he should have gotten around to making that playlist all about unicorns. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> uh, well, he'll hear the reminder when he edits this. Yep. <laughs> Would you like a copy of this book for yourself? Check for an Amazon link. We'll try to dig one up for you. Just feel like shopping? Yes, I know it technically has nothing to do with reading. My channel, my rules. <laughs> Check out the Ebates link. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. Thanks for listening. <laughs>